Toyota RAV4, the world's most popular SUV with over 1.07 million units sold only in 2023. Who would have thought that such a revolutionary design approach would need just three decades to obliterate traditional car designs? Sedans are almost dead. Hatchbacks aren't doing much better either. High-performance coupes have been replaced with high-performance SUVs. Rich men from around the world are not enjoying the comfort and luxury of stretched saloons. They drive in massive SUVs. Today's world is dominated by SUVs, and it all started three decades ago, when visionaries from the Japanese giant made a brave move and set new standards in the automotive market. This is the story of the RAV4, a car that changed everything. Stay with us as we walk you through the history of one of the models that put versatility in the spotlight, a model that offered a little bit of everything. But first, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to our channel and ensure yourself a regular dose of car reviews, previews, and comparisons, as well as some of the most exciting stories from the automotive world. The Air of Diversification This story begins in the late 1980s and early 1990s. Back in the day, the American automotive market was getting more and more colorful. Manufacturers from different parts of the world were coming to take their piece of the world's largest market. The Japanese were already established with their fuel-efficient and reliable cars. Germans were at their peak, while domestic automakers were dominating the scene. But when it comes to body styles, things were rather unison. The market was all about sedans and models like the Ford Taurus were leading the pack. Small hatchbacks also had their share, just like coupes, but the most interesting things seen back in the day were models like the Jeep Cherokee and Ford Explorer. With the rise of their popularity, it became clear that SUV body styles are no longer reserved for remote areas with challenging on- and off-road conditions. Customers across all states figured out that these body styles are also quite practical. Generous with passenger and cargo space, they had the potential to become perfect family haulers. But the SUVs of that era were large and heavy. With their body-on-frame platform, they weren't particularly easy to drive. While their engines were fuel inefficient and not particularly easy to maintain. But someone in Toyota was smart enough to see their potential in this dawn of the new automotive segment. The Japanese were thinking, why wouldn't we make something similar, just way more cheaper, more reliable, more efficient, and most importantly, easier to drive, just like we did with passenger cars? The concept was already presented at the 1989 Tokyo Motor Show. It looked compact and very car-like, but still with typical SUV proportions. Something looked odd about it, and then the media got the information that this wasn't a typical SUV of the time. Instead of a traditional, truck-based design with body-on-frame construction, this concept was built on a unibody platform. It wasn't the first time to see something like that, but no car maker before executed the overall design in such a multifaceted, versatile way. The concept was imagined as a vehicle with modern car driving dynamics with much better handling and efficiency compared to traditional SUVs. At the same time, the concept featured decent ground clearance, all-wheel drive, and all other ingredients of a proper off-roader. First Generation 1994-2000 The reception of the concept was good, but it would take another five years before the RAV4 entered serial production. That finally happened in 1994, and the automotive community was left speechless. This was the world's very first genuine crossover SUV. We say genuine because there were unibody SUVs before, like the Cherokee XJ, but other than the construction, it didn't have any other qualities of a modern crossover. On the other hand, there was the Subaru Outback introduced a couple of years earlier, but that was more of a station wagon than an SUV. The RAV4 was the first versatile SUV. It looked like an SUV and offered pretty decent off-road performance with four-wheel drive and solid ground clearance. But at the same time, it was light, compact, maneuverable, easy to drive, and fuel-efficient. The world remained shocked by the SUV that was based on the same platform as the Corolla. 
With independent suspension on both ends, the RAV4 was both comfortable and engaging to drive and, from the very beginning, the RAV4 was flexible, with various configurations on offer. It was offered both in three- and five-door layouts, but that wasn't the only reason why it attracted such a wide audience. Those leaning toward the off-roading side of the vehicle would order a version with four-wheel drive. On the other hand, those who didn't care much about off-road performance and just wanted a spacious and practical, yet cheap-running vehicle, chose a version with front-wheel drive. North America, Europe, Japan, the new kit on the block was an immediate success with its rugged look and ability to handle various driving conditions while still being easy to drive in urban environments. From the very beginning, it was clear that the RAV4 was a landmark model, so it didn't take long before other automakers released their models in the newly formed segment. The Honda CRV arrived just a year later, while the first Subaru Forester hit showrooms in 1997. By the end of the century, GM and Ford were in the new segment as well. Second Generation 2000-2005 Toyota knew it was on the right path, but the fast-growing competition was a clear sign that original design needed polishing. So, the second generation came already in 2000. The RAV4 got bigger and more rugged, but at the same time, it also got more refined with the multi-link rear suspension. Toyota's management also realized that the photo robot of a typical RAV4 buyer was changing. Off-road performance still played an important role, but customers also wanted more luxury and convenience. Compared to the original, the second generation went upscale. For the first time, it got leather upholstery and power-adjustable seats, as well as a sunroof. Automatic climate control was available already in mid-range options, just like the upgraded audio system and even the navigation system. The RAV4 became not just more luxurious, but also more capable. The original 120-horsepower engine was replaced with the new 2.0-liter inline-four with 148 horsepower, while the more expensive variants were equipped with a more robust 2.4-liter inline-four with 161 horsepower and 162 pound-feet of torque. Third Generation 2005-2012 the initial years of the 21st century brought a significant shift in customer preferences and SUVs were by and far the fastest growing segment of the market, slowly overtaking the leading position of sedans. By the time the RAV4 was ready for another redesign, pretty much every other major company had its model in the segment. The competition became fierce, but Toyota engineers continued to evolve the well-established design postulates of the class. The third generation didn't bring radical changes, but the direction in which the crossover design was going became clear. This was probably the last generation of the RAV4 with strong off-road performance. The focus was now much more on comfort and convenience. The new model brought a notable increase in size, with the cabin becoming so spacious that even a three-row version was installed. More features, nicer materials, dual-zone climate control, interior design was elevated to the next level, just like safety was. This RAV4 was equipped with the most advanced safety features of its time. Just like its predecessor, the third-generation model carried on with strong off-road performance with decent ground clearance, locking differential, and other necessary ingredients. But besides efficient powertrain options, it was even offered with a massive 3.5-liter V6 with nearly 270 horsepower. That was certainly a very exciting RAV4, but not exactly in line with the model's original nature. Fourth Generation 2012 to 2018 The fourth generation arrived in 2012 and continued with the course that was set with the previous redesign. It became even bigger and even more luxurious. It became heavier, less maneuverable, and less off-road capable. It traded off-road potential for comfort, and even though that was accepted very well by the masses, purists were not happy. The new RAV4 became something different. Then, the second production year came and brought the most radical change of the generation. This was the first time to see the RAV4 equipped with Toyota's trademark technology. This was the first RAV4 with a hybrid powertrain. 
The new system consisted of a 2.5 liter inline four engine and electric motors for a combined output of 194 horsepower. It was capable and, at the same time, the most efficient model in the class. Fifth generation, 2018 to the present. Just when we thought that someone could endanger the RAV4's leading position on the market, Toyota released the fifth generation and cemented its dominant position. Although with less interest in off-roading than its predecessor, the fifth generation attracted the widest range of customers and set record high sales figures. A big part of the reason was design, as the new model looked bold and aggressive like never before. It also continued to improve in terms of comfort and convenience. The cabin became even more luxurious, while Toyota engineers implemented some of the most advanced safety systems as part of the now well-known Safety Sense suite. Under the hood, the new generation continued with gasoline and hybrid versions on offer, but then the 2020 model year came and brought a plug-in hybrid version to the offer with over 300 horsepower. The RAV4 cemented its position as the most well-rounded SUV in the class, with more focus on fuel efficiency than ever. And such a well-rounded package ensured that the current generation is still going strong and still marks excellent sales results six years after the launch. That's clearly the reason why the Japanese manufacturer is in no rush with the new generation, though it all indicates that the sixth generation is around the corner. For now, the officials are still quiet, but we have no doubt that the RAV4 will continue to set new standards and be the front-runner in the most competitive segment in the automotive industry. Does this inevitability lead to an all-electric version, or are Toyota's about to continue insisting that EVs, especially in such a competitive segment, have no future? We should soon find out. What do you think of the next generation RAV4? Will it get an all-electric version or maybe it could come as hybrid only? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you next time.